Welcome to the often requested and long overdue tutorial on how to paint SS Camel. Now's a good time to finally get this done with the release of the SS book recently and the plastic SS figures. Now I've bought myself a platoon of heavy mortars simply because it was a, a unit that was missing from my own uh, collection of SS which are unpainted I have to say. Uh, mine are uh, old metal mid-war sculpts with maybe some late war um, gun crews but these are the, the plastic mortars a quick fly pass for you now the first thing you probably notice is there's an absolute blizzard of colours here partly because that's what SS Camel really looks like and partly because I tried a lot of different combinations before settling on what I'll show you just now. So, the base colours I'm going to be working with are beige red and rose brown. The sort of traditional base colour that I would, something I would have used myself in the past, I'll just put it down there, it is pale, uh, Jimmy Camel pale brown. Now you can see these are slightly richer versions of that and the idea there is to give me greater contrast. And then the camel blotches is flat earth and German camel dark brown. If you want to add further blotches I recommend the um, US field drab and German camel bright green. And then for the dottiness we have got light green and golden yellow. Now you put all these together and there's still 101 different ways of putting them onto the figure. Let's have a look at some ones that I did to begin with. Like you can see a guy here with the German camel, if I can get any focus, German camel pale brown tunic, but um, a beige red helmet cover. There we go. And you can see the difference uh, Every, all the other colours are the same that's on top of the um, the, the base colours but you can see what a difference that camel um, base colour makes and to begin with that's what I was using on all of them and I thought mm, a little bit too dark for me, you know me, pans of sugar, I like to keep things bright you can see the the loader here he has got a pale brown undercoat on the tunic and on the helmet cover and it ends up looking quite I mean it's, it's more than adequate and it's a blended kind of finish but in the end if I can just get some of these guys over I've gone for these brighter colours so that I've got eye catching contrast between everything. But I'll show you painting with all three uh, base colours. And also you can see on this guy's trousers there's also some Italian camel as a wee bonus at the end. Now these um, these are the, the, the latest, shall we say, latest version of plastic the battlefront are using. Uh, you need to use a sharp knife to clean it up folks, bear that in mind and watch those fingers while you'll be peeling off more than plastic and uh, generally I find it takes paint very well but all battlefront plastics take paint very well and as you see in the close-ups when I'm painting them there's plenty of detail and by the way if you want to see how I paint the uh, like the, the gas cans, the bread bag, all those little bits of detail there'll be a link to the playlist at the end of the video where you can find the rest of the German painting guides. So, let's get stuck in. So I've got these guys ready. You can see they've got um, a mixture of rose brown and beige red undercoats for the camel. Now I'm going to start with some German camel dark green blotches. 
I'm going to show you how to start by painting everything as oak leaf and then develop the oak leaf into uh, P dot camo where you want it. Let's start adding the blotches. Here I'm using the dark green. It's going to form the basis of our um, oak leaf pattern. And when you're putting these blotches on, try to be mindful of how the uniform cell is stitched together. It's not a big point, but it's something it's worthwhile doing, you know. So don't have a blotch starting on the back panel and moving on to the sleeve because the two of them wouldn't be connected and the patterns wouldn't form up in that way. Uh, if you find it difficult, as I said, don't worry about it, but it is a nice little detail uh, to bear in mind. And then with the arms, I'm trying to just go all around the arms, try and um, keep the lines three-dimensional with the figure, if you understand. And then the helmet, once again, there is actually lots of different bits of fabric in the helmet, so you could do the same again by keeping them separate, but that would be not a lot, an awful lot of work on such a small area, so I, I usually don't bother. But in the, the tunic it is possible. And here goes the flat earth. There you go, you can see how the base camo for the different uh, choices of base colour is, is starting to change and it's starting to change the intensity of the blotches as well. But it's quite a quick process doing this folks. Then onto the helmet. The helmet's helmet covers are somewhere you can really make nice clear patterns compared perhaps to the tunics which are got lots of different shapes and uh, deeper areas. Now we're using the bright green, applying this quite liberally at the moment. We're not being too dotty because we're still aiming at creating oak leaf camo just now. You know, we can change the intensity of those bright blotches as we step up to the P dot. And you can see you can have a production line going here, no problem at all, just working through your greens, working through your browns, and then uh, you know adding them in together as you'll see I'm doing uh, later. But here we've got a very, very nice contrast between that base colour. And then I'm adding in some uh, some darker greens. The contrast here between the base colour and the greens, as you can see, missed a bit. I'm always missing a bit. I've got to go back in and fix it. And then just filling in some of those spaces so that base colour is apparent. It's obvious, it's there, but it's not too obvious. And then we'll add some lighter touches to those little spots. And a few darker touches as well, just to break up the lighter areas a little. And repeating the process on the tunic. And I'm pretty much doing this at a run, folks. You know, you can do the same. Have your paint on your palette and just work through it. The paint dries quick. It doesn't have to be a laborious process. You see here now putting the golden yellow onto the flat earth blotches. That's a nice distinct contrast we've got going there as well, folks. You know, so you're going to appreciate the camel from a distance. From the distance of one brush away, it might look a bit bright, but remember we're painting them for the tabletop. And there's once again the different camo base. You can see how it's got a, a much more subdued um, uh, finish to it, even with these bright colours going on. And then some dark spots going in, just like we did with the green. And I'm out of a shot there, but there you go, there's some just uh, little spots of golden yellow. 
And once again, some dark spots just to break up the cores of those golden yellow uh, spots and blotches. Now we're going to change up some areas to P-Dot, so I'm adding in some flat earth. You can, if you wish, use uh, leather brown or something dark as well at this point, instead of flat earth, and it'll give you a more blended kind of look. But you would still use the same golden yellow um, dots. And here I'm going in with some green, dark green, just breaking up those larger areas of bright green. Trying for a more dotty kind of finish, filling in a little in those open areas of base colour. And then putting some dots in, though the, the, that yellow is getting a bit dry there. Uh, believe it or not, that yellow is too thick. That's something you probably never hear when you talk about yellow. But I stole that bottle upside down. And it was starting to really build up the, the, the P-dot look without worrying too much about getting lots of tiny little dots everywhere. And now we're doing the reverse, we're putting the green on, putting on the blotches, it's dark green. Following the fabric stitching as we go. And you can see it's now moving from an oak leaf kind of pattern to a more peadock kind of pattern. You can also, instead of adding um, the dark green, you could just add a US field drap here uh, to get a, a browner kind of finish. It looks really quite nice and you can dot that up and it's a really, really soft blended look that still says peadock and it's still from a distance that is. But you can see there's there's not a lot of effort required here, you just got to be careful you don't paint over what you've already done and you leave sufficient amount of base coat for it to add to the mix. And then in with some spotty bits on that green. And we're getting a nice busy looking P, P dot like finish. Same again on the tunic of this guy. And it's starting to come together now. And then I'm just putting in a few dark spots of the brown, just where I think there's a bit too much of the base colour showing through, and then try and just add a few more light dots to those dark spots. There's a lot of P dot camo can just look as though it's a, a blizzard of dots, and that's perfectly good. I've done it myself, but here I'm just looking for something a bit different. You can see the guy in the, the, the left here, he's got a, um, a dark brown, not a flat earth uh, blotches, and I've been a bit more dotty with them. Yep, you can see especially there, and that looks really quite nice as well. You can see the helmet there has got the flat earth, the jacket has got the uh, leather brown blotches. Let's get a few of them on the little painting mount that I use. And there you can see all the, the different, well, if the camera wants to follow the, the thing around, the autofocus, but you can see all the different kinds of P-Dot and Oak Leaf that you can get with those few colours. And they're nice and bright. Or if you want them duller, just use the pale brown and you'll get a more blended kind of look that might accentuate the dots themselves a bit more. So now they are ready for some um, lining, some shading, because I've painted over a lot of the features. Now when we 
we're putting the camel on. So now I'm putting the hem in. The hem, adding the hem is really important. It, it sets off the bottom of the jacket. And then just a few lines in important places. You don't want to put up a flurry of uh, dark lines all over the place. Just a few lines to accentuate the most important shape and tidy up any equipment you've painted over. Here I'm um, showing you some pale brown. So you can see straight away the difference. You know, that dark green isn't standing out as strong of the pale brown as it was in the rose coloured browns. But this might be what you want. So what what to show you that? Now you can see on the helmet compared to the jacket. The jacket's been done with the lighter base colours. And there's the brown, you can see the, the brown really shrinks into that, so you could go darker. And there I'm actually using a um, German camel bright green, which isn't as bright as the bright green. German camel bright green is not as bright as bright green, but you can add some bright green into that mix. Dot it up a bit if you see what I mean. There's a golden yellow going in. You can see it's a bit more subdued. Italian camel. Oh, and now we're on to the, the Italian camel. We're doing this on the trousers. I quite like it on German the trousers. Uniform. You can see I'm using German uniform, saddle brown, of saddle brown and um, the golden and yellow. Little again. splashes of golden yellow. So, so I've got the first. German uniform colour down first and then I'm adding in lines, squiggly lines of saddle brown. Don't want to be too uniform with them. Don't necessarily want to be painting hoops all the way around the legs either. And then a bit of the golden yellow. You want these lines to be tight and bold. You know, you want the, the paint as much as possible to get on in that first coat. And they can be a little bit squiggly as well, always adds to the irregular look of it. Add little licks to them here and there, little spurs sticking out. And there is your Italian camel, as easy as that folks. And a wee bit of something different. Hope you found that useful folks to give you a few ideas, a few colours. Knock yourself out, put it on whatever way you want the finished result to look like. Oops, here we go, you can see these guys are looking really quite dotty. The guy, the loader there, he's not got any green on his tunic at all. There's so many different ways you can do this. You can paint the trousers camo colour, you can leave them in just field grey. Paint the tunics one, one pattern Helmet covers with another pattern. The world's your oyster. But the main message from me here is you can be bright, you can be blended. Just whatever you think is a look that you're after and hopefully this video will help you decide how you're going to go about painting your daunting SS companies. Thanks for watching folks, if you enjoyed it please like and subscribe, plenty more Flames of War content on the way.